routers. Routers, templates, router bits, and patterns. Today we're taking a deep dive down the rabbit hole of what is arguably the most versatile tool in the shop. And when used with templates and patterns, the most accurate way to get consistent, repeatable results. But first we're going back to school to impart some router bit knowledge to help us wrap our brains around the expansive world of router bits. Getting our noggins wrapped around router bit anatomy and what the different bits do will help us pick the right bits for the task at hand, giving us the best results. We would be a month of Sundays if we were to try and cover all the router bits. In fact, we'd be a year of Sundays if we were to try to cover all the router bits. Today, we're gonna to talk about the router bits that we're gonna use with our patterns and our templates. So we're talking about pattern bits and flush trim bits. Now there's a little bit of a difference and we're gonna talk about that in a second. But first of all, let's understand the anatomy of a basic flush trim bit. This is a basic flush trim bit and I'm holding it upside down. So if this is the top and this is the bottom, starting from the top down, you have the shank. The shank is attached to the body and the body has the cutters. That's the important part. That's the business end of the router bit. Now below the cutters, you're gonna find the dust washer or dust hood as it's sometimes called. And below that, you'll find the pilot or pilot bearing, most often referred to as the guide bearing. Now, the last thing we need to think about is the finish. The finish is the part that the companies bake on to help with gumming and pitch buildup. And sometimes they claim it helps with heat buildup. So what's the difference between a flush trim bit and a pattern bit? Why do they call them that? Well, a flush trim bit has cutters that are exact same diameter as the pilot bearing. If it's cutting along a template, that pilot bearing is following the template and cutting the wood below it to the exact same geometry as the template. A pattern bit is very similar to a flush trim bit, except for the position of the bearing changes. So in this case, the bearing is at the top instead of the bottom. And I think the reason they call it a pattern bit is because this is typically used on a pattern. Now that gets a little confusing. A pattern can just be a sheet of paper or a very, very thin template. But in all the wood shops I've worked in and grown up in, we've always called something that goes on top of the wood, a template, and something you put the wood on top of, a pattern. So in this case, the pattern bit will follow along that pattern and cut the material above it to the geometry of the pattern. They have flush trim bits and pattern bits in what's called a straight blade, but they also have them in a spiral blade. Now, before we jump into spiral blades, I wanna talk a little bit more about straight blades. These have been the industry standard for 80 to 90 years. It's only recently that spiral blades have been introduced into the woodworking shop. Now, spiral blades are great and they definitely have their uses, but I think the straight blade gets a bad rap these days. First of all, you can find straight blade router bits just about anywhere you go. Hardware stores, the big box stores, woodworking shops, you can always find a straight blade bit and they come in a large variety of sizes from diameter to the length of the cutters. There's just a lot of options available and they work great. The other thing that's really nice about them is they're 30 to 50% less than spiral blades and you can sharpen them yourself so you can get a lot of use out of them. And when it comes to plywood, they work amazing on plywood. Like we don't hardly ever use anything else but straight blades when we're cutting plywood with our routers and our router table. So as far as I'm concerned, straight blades have a place in every shop. They're a great option. They can get a lot of work done and they have a really long life if you sharpen them yourself. Enter stage left, the spiral bit. Because the blades are spiraled, as they move across the face of the material, they're shear cutting the wood. They're not cutting directly across the grain. And that shear cut means some pretty valuable things when it comes to cutting hardwoods, especially hardwoods where grain direction is changing. In hardwoods, when you're cutting grain from different directions, rather than cutting straight across where you might have a chance to chip out, especially if your blade is a little bit dull, it shear cuts it. So that means you're gonna have a lot less of a chance of chip out. And when you're using expensive hardwoods, it's really nice to avoid that chip out. Because it's spiral, 
per inch, there's more blade that's actually engaging the wood. So you're getting less vibration and the angle of attack is not as severe. So again, you're getting less vibration. And less vibration means a smoother finish on the material cutting, and it also means less wear and tear on your routers. So, and when you get into spirals, you can find large blades like this. Now, this is a little bit different than what we've talked about before. Now, this one is still called a flush trim bit. It's called a combination flush trim, instead of like a combination flush trim pattern templating something bit. This is a pretty impressive bit. It has cutters that both cut down and up at the same time. And it's about an inch in diameter. But this bit costs about $200. Now there's a place for it, but most often in our shop, you're gonna find a quarter inch bit in our router table. So spiral bits come in three ways. They have an upcut, a down cut, or they have a combination of the two and that's called a compression bit. For our purposes today, we're gonna focus on upcut and down cut. And it's really easy to tell if you don't see a label or something on it, if it's an up cut or a down cut, just hold the bit in the proper position. So top up, spin it clockwise. And if it looks like the blades are spinning upwards, that's an up cut. If you take a down cut, do the same thing, spin it clockwise again, it looks like the blades are cutting down. That's a really easy way to tell the difference between the two if the bits get mixed up in your router bit box. 90% of the time, you're gonna find a spiral upcut bit in our router table. Now, when you turn the bit over and you turn it in the clockwise position, it's actually counterclockwise now. When it's spinning counterclockwise, these blades are pulling the material that you're cutting into the bearings. And that's gonna assist keeping the template tied up against that pilot bearing, so it makes it just easier to cut, less chance of kickback, and a much more pleasant experience. Before we jump into a discussion about best practices for routers and templates, let's take a quick recap of the benefits of both straight and spiral bits. The value of straight bits is that they're easy to find. They can be found on the shelves of most hardware stores. They're easy to sharpen. You can sharpen them yourselves. So you're gonna get a long life out of them. They're less expensive. They're usually 30 to 50% less than spiral bits. And they come in lots of sizes. With spiral bits, we get cleaner cuts. Because of the shearing action, we get cleaner cuts and less chance of chip out. There's also less vibration. Because there are more cutters in the wood and we're shearing the wood, we get less vibration, which means better quality cuts. They're also easier on routers. Less vibration means less wear and tear on our routers. One of the other benefits is chip direction. By using an up cut or a down cut, we can kind of control the direction that the chips fly out, making dust collection sometimes easier. Now that we've got the router bits under our belt, we're gonna talk a little bit about routers. In a basic, average, run-of-the-mill woodworking shop, you're gonna be looking at three sizes of routers. From little to not so little. On the small end of things, you're gonna have what are called palm routers. This one is 18 volts. Now the corded version of this will be about one and a quarter horsepower. They come with a quarter inch collet, so they accept bits with a quarter inch shank. You can also get a one eighth collet, so a smaller collet for smaller bits for this router. And they're well suited for the smaller bits, like the quarter inch flush trims, a quarter inch round over, even up to about a three eighths round over. But once you get past that, you need something with a little more oomph. Meet a little more oomph. These routers come anywhere between one and three quarter horse up to about two and a half horse. These two routers are two and a quarter horse routers. And they come with two different collet sizes. They come with a quarter inch and a half inch. So you can put a half inch shank in one of these routers. The two and a quarter horse routers are what we use in our router table. And these routers will run everything the smaller router will do and bigger. So if I wanted to run, let's say, a bit like this, that's one inch in diameter, I'm not gonna have any trouble running this. And I can run some smaller shaping bits. And when I say smaller, I mean up to about an inch and a quarter in diameter if I'm re removing some decent wood. But once I get over that, I'm really gonna wanna step it up to the next level of router. Meet the next level of router. This is a three and a quarter horsepower beast of a machine. If I wanna run big flattening bits like these two giants, this is the router I'm going for. It's also great for large bits for doing shaping. So things like cabinet doors where you have a lot of meat that you need to take out. This is the router that you're gonna choose. Currently, I'm actually tearing this one apart to build a machine for making tongue and groove indoor siding. It's really hard to say what router you should buy first because these two are the workhorses in our shop. We use it for all of our templates, any of the large removing of material from you know, cabinet builds, but honestly, we probably use this more for small roundovers, tabbing and countertops. This probably sees more use. But if I had to pick between the two, I'd start here because this can just handle a lot more than the little fella can. 
There's a lot more to learn about routers, and we quite frankly cannot fit it into a single video. But I will link a couple videos down below. One's from Stumpy Nubs and the other one's from James Hamilton. It has to do with feeds and speeds of a router and what settings to put your router on to get the most optimum result. You need to be aware that you can change the speed, so the rotational speed of a router. And depending on what bit you're using in the router, having the right speed makes a big difference in the life of the bit and the performance and quality of the cut. So go check those links after you're done watching this video. When it comes to templates and patterns, I have three basic rules that we live by all the time and those rules are really simple the thicker the better the smoother the better and the clearer the better let me explain so most people don't know that Maggie and I have one of the largest selections of templates online anywhere and what's unique about ours is that we make ours out of 3 8 inch material and they can be vacuumed down to a workpiece. You don't have to double side tape them. You can double side tape them, of course. The vacuum allows you to go ahead and vacuum them down. You can adjust them and move them around really quickly without having to pull any tape if you want to. We like them to be clear so we can see what's happening underneath. If we need to adjust because we have a knot in a place we don't like or something like that, it's really nice to be able to see what's going on, especially with the grain. If you're trying to tune the grain, that's really important. Now we'll get into that in a little bit. I'll show you how these work, but I also have the same rule for patterns. I never go under a half inch with patterns when I'm making patterns. Now you don't need to see through patterns because the wood's going on top of them, but the thicker the better and the smoother the better. Having a nice smooth and well sanded pattern matters. Now on this one, you're gonna see some little edges that that was intentionally put there to translate that geometry down below. But if I was going around a corner and I wanted something really smooth, I would make sure that that edge is nice and smooth because any little imperfections is going to translate into the material that I'm cutting, especially when you're using smaller pilot bearings. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that we keep a quarter inch bit in our router table almost all the time. And that's because we're usually cutting templates. Now, that quarter inch follow bearing or that quarter inch pilot bearing fits right into some really tight areas so we can really get a lot of definition out of our templates. And that's one of the reasons we really like it. Now that means when we're cutting our templates out or when we're cutting our piece of material out, once we've drawn our pencil line, we want to be within an eighth inch of that line. You never want to have more material than half the width of the bit. You always want that sacrificial material that's left over to be less than half the width of whatever bit you're using. And the closer to the line, the better. So it's a really good chance to practice cutting close to the line without cutting on the line. I'm gonna show you how the vacuum hold down works on one of our nesting handle templates. So this has got three different nesting handles on it. On this side, it's the exact same geometry as this, so you can like nest them together. And on this side, this has two pieces that actually come out and you can router this out of a pattern and put this in and router that out of a pattern or leave it in place and you can get effects like this. So it nests the handle right into it. And we really like this with the two different options of wood. For our vacuums, we have two different options set up. We have this vacuum right here, and all we do is put this little fitting on top of the router template and turn it on, and it vacuums it right to the work holding, so I don't need to use tape, which is really handy. The other option we have is the Grabo. Now, a lot of our templates, the Grabo fits right on, so you just put it on the template and create a vacuum and it holds it right down. For some of these smaller templates like this one, it works the same way as a large vacuum pump. You just put it on the vacuum plate, which is right here. We have those on our site. You put the fitting on top of the, of the template and then just turn the gravel on. <laughs> holds the template to the workpiece and you router it out and you turn the gravel off. And then the template comes right off. No double-sided tape to deal with. Using a vacuum with templates is very handy and you can make your own vacuum templates at home as well. Earlier I said thicker is better. And the reason I said that is because you can move that bearing up and down that template. You're not stuck in just an eighth inch or quarter inch area. You've got a full three eighths of an inch to play with and the thickness of the pilot bearing. What that's gonna do is give you the opportunity to get a fresh edge on the top or the bottom of the material where it's most likely to tear out. So you can get a little bit more life out of your bit before you have to sharpen it or if you're using a spiral bit, replace it. Also, if I had to pick between only being able to use straight bits or spiral bits, at the end of the day, I would pick straight bits. 
They're a lot less expensive. That you can sharpen them yourself, and if you keep them sharp, you can get really good performance out of them. So, yeah, I'd pick the straight bits. Thank you for taking your valuable time to watch this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. Especially if you're just getting started in this world, it can be a little bit confusing, and I hope we kind of help set you down the right path on using templates and patterns and routers and router bits. I'll put a link in the description to our templates if you want to check those out, and I'll put a link down there for some of our favorite routers and router bits. If you're not already subscribed and you feel like I've earned your subscription today, we'd really appreciate that. And don't forget to hit the bell notification next to it so you get notified when we put new content up. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.